Hi, this is Ken Rimple of Chariot Solutions, and I'm here to talk to you today about bundling your application in Angular, specifically bundling it for production as opposed to development, and also analyzing the size of your targets as well, so you have an idea of what size you start with and how you can improve that. All right, so first things first, we have this little application. It's called Drum Legend. Uh, it's available on GitHub. Uh, it's like a little sample app that I wrote for a couple of conferences recently, uh, and so... It's just a real simple uh, drum machine uh, game. And the goal is to play patterns uh, by hitting a MIDI drum pad, or in the case of people without them, you can use the right and left keys, or R and L. I'm a lefty, so the R key is on the left side of the keypad, so that actually works for me. I can kind of play inverted. And what it does is it's kind of a guitar hero kind of thing. And at the end, At the end, it uh, just shows uh, your score. And this thing uses um, Angular 4. It uses the um, Angular uh, uh, RxJS libraries and observables to deal with the audio chain, ultimately outputting the audio with Tone.js. Uh, and in addition, it uses um, something called NGRX Store and NGRX Effects. Uh, to do basically a Redux pattern to store the state of the game. Um, so it's an inter interesting little application. I, I really enjoyed working on it, uh, and I was able to kick uh, observables a little bit and see how they work in a decently performing uh, way. So that's our little target app. Uh, the application is a couple, you know, a couple modules, uh, and they're all kind of bundled together in this typical way in the Angular CLI. Uh, we've got the vendor bundle, which is basically all the libraries like Angular and such. Uh, we've got the Angular uh, app itself in main bundle uh, here, which is the the code. Uh, and we've got a polyfills bundle for all the, the polyfills we have for non-HTML5 browsers uh, and non-ES6 browsers to bring out the stuff. And everything else is kind of like inlining of, uh, you know, startup scripts and things like that. So as you see, as we're running this thing, 3.77 megs is what we are downloading to the browser with this vendor bundle JS file uh, that we're, we're delivering. So one way you can uh, build uh, and deliver to a website is to do ng build. And what it will do is it'll create a dist directory. And we're using the Angular CLI for this. Uh, it's uh, We're using the, the dist directory. And when it's finished, it'll output all these JS files, some map files, uh, which are your uh, source maps, into the dist directory. And if we do ls minus lh, get the human size, human readable size for everything. Now we can see we've got, uh, you know, the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong place here. Look in dist, we can see we now have the um, 3.4 megabyte vendor bundle JS file. Our source maps are inline source maps, which means they contain the source code as well as the mapping. Uh, that way, if you compress or whatever, you have the original source. Uh, you can flip that if you want to, but that's what I'm doing right now is generating those. And uh, if what we want to do is we want to analyze the uh, code in our source maps and see how everything is broken down, we can, let me just close everything out here. We can use something called source map explorer now before i do this um, that's an old version of, uh, of the demo i was doing earlier but if i do npm install minus g source map explorer then i have this as a tool that i can use anywhere i that i'm uh, working all i need to do is go to a script file that has source maps defined for it and that's what i get in my dist directory by default so i can type source map explorer and I want to analyze first the application itself because I think that's interesting main bundle it's going to come up here it's going to bring this up for me I'll bring the browser window over and now we can see that the app itself is relatively small 56k um, our source isn't that much code um, the state machine is our uh, ngrx and um, uh, store, which is like a Redux store. So the part of the app that deals with that is about uh, 21k. 
uh, the synthesizer code, the, the stuff that integrates with the synthesizer and with MIDI, uh, is 17K for the actual uh, integration with the audio tone driver. And to adapt the data back and forth from various MIDI devices is about 8K. And then we have a few other things as well, like the main component, its container, and any of our models and data. Okay, so that's your traditional kind of basic application. Um, now, what we should look at next is why that vendor bundle is so big. Again, the vendor bundle is actually 4.2, I'm sorry, 3.4 meg. So let's do that source map explorer. Vendor.bundle.js. And now what we're going to see is the 3.39 megs. Let's uh, bring that up. Yeah, a little bit big there. All right, again, this is a live clickable view. Um, and you can see Angular is 1.97 meg. That is a lot for Angular. Um, but you know, that that is what it is, the, the base package uncompressed and unshaken and un, uh, you know, comp uh, un, I guess pared down uh, is 3.39 meg. RxJS is about 650k. That's pretty chunky too. We've got ToneJS at 712k, uh, NGRx, which is relatively light, uh, is 56k, and the dev tools for it and things like that uh, are a little smaller. But overall, we're dealing with 3.39 meg. All right. So what we want to do is we want to try to find a way to compress this thing. A um, couple things. First of all, uh, if you go to the Angular guides on the Angular JS website. Let's go to the website briefly. And we go to Docs. We go to uh, Guide. Uh, actually, it may be in the, in fact, it is in the Advanced or Cookbook areas. Let me find it here. It should be Deployment. Yes. So there's a Deployment section. And the Deployment section uh, talks about all the stuff that I'm showing you here. So ahead of time compilation and then Webpack um, the good news is Angular CLI does all these for you as best practices. So that's the good news. Um, the bad news is it can be a little bit confusing to figure out how to make this all work. So it is definitely worth reading this. And I'll also give you a few other notes uh, in the in the uh, video and the blog post around the video that will explain some of these things, uh, some of the things you have to pay attention to once you start dealing with ahead of time compilation. But the way Angular CLI works is, we'll just go up here, is that if you do ng build dash production or just prod, it will use ahead of time compilation. The default mode is called just in time, uh, and just in time is the 3.4 uh, megs that we saw earlier. Uh, and now ahead of time compilation, as long as your code is properly put together, uh, is going to be significant savings in the size. And we're going to see here as this outputs, and we're going to get down um, significantly uh, now. You're seeing in here vendor 2.48 meg, but if I look dist, we actually got the vendor all the way down to 731k. Uh, and so actually through, due to tree shaking and cleaning up, we really cut this way down. The other thing you'll notice here is that we've got uh, hashes in front of all the file name prefixes, and that's because it's trying to cache bust for you. So it does all these things automatically. Um, and if we do like a ng help uh, build, you're going to see in here that there's lots of other options we can take advantage of here. Okay. Um, but, you know, if I just did a, uh, if I go into the disk directory and I do a head on vendor, it's already compressed, uh, which is great. Uh, and it's all concatenated and it's only 731k for that whole library. But... Maybe we should try to analyze that. So we'll go back and do the source map explorer. And now you're going to notice that it's going to complain to you and say it can't find a source map. Well, if you were quick enough to view uh, the ng help build uh, and read quickly enough, you would have seen that there is a way of generating source maps. It's dash dash source maps. So we'll just add that to our build and see what it does. And in turn, what it will do is it will build the source maps, uh, which have the full source in them, if you debug and are looking for problems, 
in your minified code, which is really nice, actually. Uh, so you can set breakpoints in the code, even though you're in AOT mode, and you should be able to get to the actual uh, code that was running at that time in uncompressed format. Um, and we can analyze it then, too. Let's see what happens. All right, so now if we do an ls mice lh of dist, yep, source maps are back, huge, uh, because now I have to basically unwind all the source. Um, and so let's see what happens when we do a, and I don't know, yeah, it looks like the hash is the same because the source, do, source code didn't change appreciably. Uh, so it kept the same cache busting hash since the source code is identical. And notice this, we're now to 732K. That was the size of Tone.js before, and Tone.js itself was 700K. Angular was way up at 3 point something or other, 3.4. So this is a huge savings in size. Um, you know, so that's a really helpful thing to do. And let's see if we can serve this thing. Live server. That's a node package that I install. I uh, want to do a software development, and it automatically comes up. It's nice and quick. Play my game. Everything's fantastic. And just for fun, let's go to some debugging. So we'll go to Webpack. Source, look at that. Source, app, drum legend, synthesizer, mini message and there it is and let's actually uh to put a breakpoint on something here we'll go into the state machine go to the green play reducer and put a breakpoint on process next pattern um, which is the method that gets triggered when we switch levels in about four seconds. And there you have it. So now I'm debugging with uncompressed source maps, but I'm running with ahead of time compilation in a much smaller package than I would have otherwise. All right, hope you found this useful. The other thing that uh, you can also do, uh, and, and this is kind of cool, is get at your development tools. And it turns out that, you know, I haven't removed the Webpack time travel debugging. So, um, and, and just so you know, this is actually Redux time travel debugging. This is the Redux dev tools. Um, if you've done anything with Redux and you're going into Angular and learning about NGRX store, it is compatible with the Redux dev tools, which is fantastic. I didn't remove them from the library. They came along with me and I have my source maps as well. All right. Hope you found this useful. And for any information further, go ahead and tweet me at, at Rimple on tech, uh, and talk to you soon. Happy coding. Thank you.